In this screencast, we're going to build the same micro application that we did in the previous screencast, except we're going to use Node.js and the Express framework, as well as the MongoDB driver for Node and JavaScript. If you're not familiar with the Express framework, I did a Tuts Plus course on Express a couple of months ago, so check out the link to that down below. It's here on Tuts Plus Premium, and of course, if you're watching this, it will be included as part of your subscription. I have Express installed here, as you can see, but if you don't have Express installed, you can get Express just by running npm install dash g express. And as you can see, I'm actually being updated to the latest version here, but if you don't have it, it will just install for you. Once you have that installed, let's move to the desktop and I'm going to make an Express app by running Express and I'm gonna call this mongo dash js. So now you can see here on the desktop, this has been created. I'm gonna go ahead and move into mongo dash js and the first thing we want to do is edit our package.json file here. I'm just going to update this so that we are installing the MongoDB package, the latest version of it, and we also want to install the node daemon package. The node daemon package is just so that I don't have to restart the node server every time I make a change by changing our start script here to node daemon app.js, and then we can run npm start, as you'll see in a second here. Then, uh, whenever we make a change to the app.js file, the server will restart automatically and we don't have to restart it ourselves. So now I can run npm install and it will make sure all of those are installed. While those are installing, I'm gonna open up a new tab here and I want to remove the routes folder and the public folder. We're not going to need those. Okay, that's still installing. So let's go ahead and open up our app.js file and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We don't need the routes or the users. We don't need paths. However, I do want to add uh, Mongo, which will be requiring uh, the MongoDB package that we will have installed. I can get rid of pretty much everything in here except body parser, and I can get rid of all of this. And I'm just going to shorten this up by passing it uh, 3000 directly to listen. That will be the port that this is running on. Okay, we'll be coming back to this in a second, but as you can see, it looks like our packages have finished. So then I can run npm start and the server will start up just fine. Okay, so now that we have cleaned this up and we've pulled in the MongoDB package, it's time to set up a couple of variables. We wanna have our database here and this is going to be a new mongo.db instance. We want to create the my app database and we have to pass this an instance of mongo.server. And this mongo.server here is what's going to connect to our actual server. So we want to tell it that we just are connecting to the localhost server, and this is gonna be on port 27017. That's the default port. So if you haven't changed that, that's what it should be. We also want to create a people variable, and this is going to be db.collection people. And so now this people here is going to be our actual collection that we can work off of. Okay, so now we're ready to make our first route. And our first route is going to be a get on the root route. So we will pass this a callback function with the request and response objects. And this will be just like the PHP application that we wrote in the previous screencast. So what we're going to do here is get all of the documents so that they can be listed underneath the form. So we're going to do people.find, just as you might think. And note that in Node, just like with PHP, the find method here returns a cursor object. And in Node, this cursor object is a little different than it is in PHP, because we can't just loop over it the way we did in PHP. We actually have to call another method off of this to get the objects that are returned here. Now, there are a couple of methods that we can use here. For example, if this find is supposed to return a lot of data, then you can use some streaming methods to slowly bring that data in over time so that it doesn't overwhelm your application. However, in our case, we can just use the toArray method. Now remember that Node.js is asynchronous and the Node driver for MongoDB certainly reflects this as well. So we want to pass a callback here to the toArray method. And of course, being Node, this callback will take an error and it will take the documents. So first we'll just say, if there's an error, we'll go ahead and throw the error. But hopefully there won't be an error. So that means in here we'll have the documents that we want to respond with. And this docs variable here will be an array of the documents that we got from our find query here. So now we can say response.render. We're going to render the index.jade file, which we'll create in a second. And the people are just going to be the documents variable there. Okay, so there we go. That's rendering our index.jade file. 
However, we need to create that index.jade file, and we can find that in views slash index.jade. Now there's a default one that, that Express built for us. We're going to clear that out and start over. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a form. The method is, of course, going to be post. And in here, we'll have a paragraph. This paragraph will have the text name. And then inside of it, we're going to have an input of type text. And then this input will have a name of name. I'll go ahead and copy this, paste it below. We'll change this to job. And we can change this to job here as well. And finally, we'll have a paragraph with a button that has the text add. So there's our form. That's pretty simple. So now we want to add our list of people. Well, if people.length is greater than zero, we'll do one thing. Else, we'll just have a paragraph that has the text no people. Uh, however, if we do have people, we'll have an unordered list. And then we will say for each person in people, in here, we want to have a list item. We'll have an H2. In this, we will have person.name plus an opening parentheses plus person.job plus the clothing parentheses. So as you can see, now we're working with the actual document. And this will end up with the same output that we had in our PHP application. We'll have their name property, and then we'll have their job property. So underneath this H2, we want to have a paragraph. Uh, this one will have an, a link to, this will just be slash update slash, and then we can use interpolation here to put in person dot underscore ID. And the text for this is going to be update. And then beside that, we will have slash delete slash, and then we will interpolate person dot underscore ID once again. And we can put delete there. And that should be everything that we need for our index.jade file. So I'll save and close that. Our server over here looks like it's running just fine. So now we can pop open Chrome and head over to localhost 3000. And it looks like we have a mistake. So let's see where the problem is. If we come back to the server here, it says that we have no open connections. And we can solve this problem uh, by coming back here and adding a property here to our Mongo server here. Let's just say that we want to automatically reconnect to the server um, over the course of our the use of our application. So just by setting auto reconnect there to true, I should be able to come back and refresh the page. And you can see that now our form is loading up just fine. And we have the text no people showing up underneath. So now I can go ahead and choose to add a name and a job here. And when I go ahead and click add, we get the message cannot post to the root route. So now we need to write our post function for actually adding this to the database. So let's go ahead and say when we post to the route, we will have a callback here for the request and the response. So in here, what we want to do is people, that's our collection, right? And we want to insert. And we just write our document here in JavaScript, just like we did on the console. So we'll set the name equal to the request dot body dot name. And we will set the job equal to the request dot body dot job. Now, if you aren't familiar with the way Express works, those the, the request body here is just the values that got passed from our form since our form was posted. The body is where those parameters are stored. So request body name, request body job. That's good. So now we can have a callback function here that we will call when the item has been saved. So we'll put our document there. And as before, we can just say, if there is an error, throw the error. Otherwise, what we want to do is response dot redirect. And we want to redirect it back to the root route. And of course, this is just going to redirect it back up here. And it's going to run a get on the home route. And that way, we'll render our index.jade file. And all our people, including the one that we just created down here in our post, should show up on our document. So now if we come back here, let's go ahead and fill these values in again. I can say John Doe a developer, web developer. And now when I click add, you can see the page stays the same. And now we have a John Doe object. Let's go ahead and create a Jane Smith version. And we can say she's the CTO. And voila, there we have it. Okay, so now we're ready to do updating. Now when I hover over our update button here, you can see that down at the bottom on the status bar, we have update slash and that again is the user ID. So let's come back to our code. And we need to create a get route for slash update slash ID. That's how we would define a variable within a URL colon ID. Now this time, instead of just finding all of the people, we want to find a specific person. So we're going to say people find one. 
and we want to find it by the underscore ID, and we can say new mongo dot object ID. And on the command line, the D in ID is lowercase, but here it is uppercase. And we're going to pass this the request parameter params dot ID. And this will be the value of this variable in the URL. So that will find the right one. And then we'll have our callback here where we get past the right document. Once again, if there is an error, we will throw the error. However, if there's not an error, we are going to render the update.jade template and we will pass it the local variable of person and this person will be the document that we just received. Excellent. So now we're ready to open uh, views slash update.jade. Now, since this form is going to be very simple to the one we had in our index file, I'm going to go ahead and copy that and we'll paste it in here. The difference here is that we want to add some values in here. So we're going to add our value here and this value will just use the pound and then curly brackets to interpolate. And this is going to be person.name. And then down here on job, we're going to set the value to person.job. And then I'll just change the text from of the button from add to update. And that is it. That's all we need to do. So I can save and close that. And then we are ready to create our route. Before we create our route, let me show you the page. If I go ahead and click update here on John Doe, you can see that we're bought, brought to a form here and these values are already filled in for us, ready for us to click update. However, if I were to change this from web developer to just developer and click update, we'll get the message that we can't post to update slash ID. So let's go ahead and create that root. App.get on slash update slash colon ID. We will use the people.update method. First thing we need to do is pass it our query. And so again, this is going to be where the mongo uh, dot object ID equals request parameters dot ID. And now let me actually put this on a second line so this line doesn't get too long. Down here, we're going to have our object. We will again do this by replacement, set this to the name to request body name, and then we'll set job to request dot body dot job, close off the object here. And then we have our function that returns our error and our item. And now if there is an error, we will throw the error. Otherwise, again, we can redirect back to the home page and redirect is a method there on the response object. Okay, so that's updating. Let's see if it works. And on John Doe, we'll choose to update. We'll change his position from web developer to just developer. I can click update. Uh, we still get can't post. Let's see, what did I do? Oh, I accidentally said get here instead of post. So we'll change that method name to post there. And now click update, change this to developer, update. And now we're brought back home and you can see he's changed to developer. Let's try changing Jane's Smith. Um, we'll change her name to just include her middle initial of Q, Jane Q Smith, click update. And you can see that now her name includes her middle initial. So we've done reading, we've done writing, we have done updating, all that's left is deleting. So let's go ahead and create our delete route. This is going to be a get route. So we're going to get on slash delete uh, slash ID, just as we have with our update routes. Now in here, we want to run people dot remove. And we're going to remove it where the ID is equal to the new mongo dot object ID, once again, passing it the request parameters ID, and then we have our callback. If there's an error, we will throw the error. Otherwise, as we have before, all we have to do is do a response dot redirect back to the root route. So now let's go ahead and try and delete Don John Doe. And as you can see, he's gone. We'll delete Jane. And now we have the text no people. So let's create a new person from scratch. Kate Wills is our designer. There she is. We can choose to update it by changing her job to copywriter. And then we can delete her and she's gone. So those are the four cred actions. And there we have a basic look at the MongoDB driver for Node. I think it's really neat to see how when you're using the Node driver, it still is an API that's very similar to the one we used on the command line, but it takes on the asynchronous nature of Node and it conforms to many of Node's conventions while still being that API that we are familiar with from the command line. So for more information about the Node driver, you can check out the documentation linked to below the video.